boy guy in the glass. I told him I was gonna get you on camera. So I'll be holding you up? Yep. You so you think me talking to everybody is holding you up? Yep. Oh, okay. We have a schedule, ma'am. Okay, make sure y'all like, comment, uh, and share. And share because sharing is caring. I, I got a bone to pick with you this morning. Wow, that sounds like a hurt. You know what? I'm gonna stay a little bit. You know what I'm gonna do? That sounds like a hurt. You know what I'm gonna do? Hey, Chicago, how you doing, bro? You doing all right? Wow. How's, how's everything? We still gonna pray for you, girl. Nuh-uh. No, uh, you don't get to say nothing. No, you. you don't get to say nothing. You don't get to say nothing. No, you don't get to say nothing. Too. No, no, no. You doing good, girl. Yes, I know, I know. It's Lynn. It's Lynn. You know, yeah. I promise you, we'll deal with this later. But you know what else we got to talk about? You interrupted my conversation. Fellowship acts, okay? So what What, what was our acts this time? It's not even, man. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. See, look. See, you don't even hold track you of time. This whole hour messed you up, didn't it? You, this whole hour messed you up. Chikana, we need this to talk about This whole hour messed you up. We need to talk You don't even know the schedule. It ain't eight no more. It's nine. Dude. Nah, you good. But you, you good. interrupted my conversation. Wow, man. You see how she doing it, y'all? So first you tell me that I leave it? you behind. This is a lie. This is a lie. Now right you interrupted my conversation. This is a lie. This is crazy. You know, talk, talk about that. Wow. Stop talking about that. Don't get it on camera. You talk about that. Wow. You talk about where are you going? You talk about it. Where are you going? You talk about it. Wow. So fellowship acts. How y'all doing? How y'all mm -hmm. doing? Look, y'all look great. Y'all look cold. Y'all look warm. No, don't look great. talk about it. All right. So family promise. Okay, mm -hmm. so what? Come back here. Come on, you, come you on, because you're doing the most. Oh no, no, no! At I almost ten o'clock in the I morning. Come on, come on! Not in the Lord's house. You not know in the what? Lord's house. You know what? Not in the Lord's house. Okay, we'll All pray right. for you. Right. Okay, no, no, no. We're gonna pray uh -huh. for you. We're gonna intercede for you. Go ahead. Talk about acts. We're gonna intercede for you. Go ahead. So no, what is family promise? What is family promise? Mm -hmm. Come on. You say what is family, family promise? promise is. Okay, so we help families. It helps families regain homes, mm -hmm. their independence, oh, their yeah. dignity. Oh, yeah. Okay, so what we're going to do. What we're going to do. As a church. Uh-huh. Right? Ooh, God said that there be light. All right, so. And what we're going to do. So we're going to help furnish and clean up their new location that they have in Perry. In Perry. Yes. Right? Yes, That's I'm so good. I'm excited about I'm that. I'm glad you're excited about that. I'm so excited. Yes. I feel the sarcasm in your voice. Oh, yeah. Ooh, that, ooh, okay. that's a, um, ooh, that's a sarcastic Valerie, spirit. Hold uh, on. Uh, Duncan, we will we, talk. We're going to deal with that later. We're going to deal with that later. Sorry. <laughs> Thank you, boo. <laughs> see? 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 She know what's up. Why had to break us out of character? Like no, 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 no. She know what's up. Look at the camera. She know, what's up. she know what's right. up. She know what's up. She know what's up. Come on. Go ahead. You can forget about that accessory break. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. That was kind of, that was Valerie. Okay? Okay. Get, get it. They go, you know, keep going. Keep, keep going. going. Mm -hmm. So, what makes this month so special? What I makes this month so special? I don't know, honey. You're going to have to tell me. I mean, we got, I mean, you know, you got the thing with the thing with, with the guy oh, up there the thing, in the church the up thing, here. The thing that's next week. Yeah. Next, next week? week? Is it next week? Is it the next week, next week? Next week, next week. It's the next week, next week. I know next what you're week, talking next about. Week. Right. It's Pastor's seventh anniversary. anniversary. Yes. I mean, are we excited? Can y'all clap it up for that? No, seven no, years. No, we're not going to clap it up seven for that. It's been seven man. years, y'all. Come on That's now. That's crazy. I know. I'm really Oh, my goodness. Look at that. Look at that. Look, look at, that. at that. That is. I mean, can y'all give an applause for your pastor, please? I mean, look at y'all pastor. Look at that. Look at Come on, Woody. That boy got on the suit and top. Come on, Woody. Come on, hey. That's crazy. That's now, what I'm talking about. Now, what we, now we, you've been here for a minute, right? Yes, yes, right. I have. I have. You know, pastor be preaching some amazing sermons. All right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. Right. Yes, I do know. So, I do know. what was your favorite sermon that he has ever preached? Okay, well, I'm going to continue to put you on blast. You took mine. No, I didn't. <laughs> you took mine. And so I had to come up with another sermon. But that other sermon, I just said, uh, you know, I take a lot of notes when this guy preaches sometimes, you know, because he's so fast at it. But it was Faith Under Fire. You remember faith that? Under Fire. That you was that? a good one. Oh, yeah. That was a good one. Yeah, they didn't uh, compromise God just because they had an opportunity. <laughs> like, uh, you know, uh, a lot of people do that. But, uh, yeah, that's oh, a wait, word. Oh, wait, 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 wait. wait. That's a word. That's, yeah, a word. that's a whole sermon. That's a whole sermon. Whole sermon. Huh. Faith Under that's Fire. That's funny. What was yours? We have found the book during the pandemic. Oh, yeah. You like that one? Oh, that was good. It was good? That was a good one. Now, I'm going to tell you why I like mine. Okay, why did you like yours? Okay, I like mine. Faith Under Fire. 
I like mine. Oh, by the way, if you had a favorite sermon that pastors preach, put it in the comments, please. I know y'all was watching. I, I hope that, he was watching. Is that okay. Thing? No, but we have to be, we know we gotta, we gotta conversate, communicate, is, collaborate. Oh, all of a sudden we have to conversate, communicate, <laughs> elaborate. In the comments. But that's, you interrupted my conversation. That's called an alliteration. Oh, okay. All right then. Don't say we didn't teach y'all mm -hmm. nothing. Okay, keep going. Go ahead. No, what's up? Faith under fire. I like Why faith like under that? fire because it really encouraged us during the pandemic. I agree. I agree. It really did. I A agree. lot of people's faith was under fire. I agree. We had I to agree. see what people stood on after, you know, the lights, the camera, the action was gone. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. 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 That's, that's good. Okay. That's tell, good. tell your why. My why for we have found the book. Yeah. Why? Because of Don't what? Be too no, because of what pastor said, the word of God, from God, should be consistent with the word of God. And you know what? That's right. That's right. And see, exposed a lot of people. Yeah. You yeah. got a lot of people who saying God has a word, but the word ain't found in the Bible. I'm just going to put that out there. You, you know? I'm, a, uh -huh, I'm just saying. All right. <laughs> so, you know, we just going to. We going we leave it there. We you know, that's that's for up there, right? I know, that's for another another that's day. That's for another day. Another you day. You know, maybe part two of that, you know, I don't know. Is there gonna be a part two? I don't know. I don't know. You know that <laughs> Look, all I'm saying is during the pandemic, you know, you had a lot of uh People proclaiming to speak for God, but uh, that, that, that miss. Look, just look, a bit, your just name a is bit. Dre, not just, minister right now. No, it's not just, no you told right me now. why. I'm telling uh, you my why. Uh, you know you what? Told me my we're going gonna to turn it over to Josh. Josh, oh, oh, you no, go that ahead That is and not Josh. That is Peter Pan. I. That is Peter Pan, sir. That is Peter Pan. Yes, yes, yes you. Yes. 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 You look good, bro. The first African American Peter Pan, might I add. <laughs> yes. Yes. Thank Good. You. Thank you. Do your thing. All right. Well, I'm not Joshua. I'm Peter Pan. Um, <laughs> well, good morning, Minister DeAndre, and good morning, Brianna, and good morning, Fellowship. Hopefully, everyone remember to set their clocks one hour four. And, you know, I missed that hour. I'm not going to lie. It, it was pretty rough. But it's so good to be in the house of the Lord. So here's what's happening here at the ship. We are still hiring for a full-time grounds and facility manager. If you're interested, go to fbbchome.org careers and review the qualifications. If you feel that you are qualified, send your resume to hr at fbbchome.org. All married couples are invited to attend our Couples Feud Game Night, hosted by the 2B1 Marriage Ministry on March 19th from 5 p.m. 7 p.m. right here in the Dome. The host for this event will be Sis, Sister Gladden Spies. To attend this event, go to fbvchome.org slash events to register. You have until March 16th to do so. So for more information, contact Deacon Andrew or Cynthia Cromarty by emailing at 2b1fbvchome.org. If you're a fan of the TV show Critter Fixtures Country Vets, you're going to be interested in this announcement. This show is hosted by Dr. Terrence Ferguson and our own Dr. Bernard Hodges. The new season of Critter Fixtures Country Vets airs this Saturday, March 26th at 9 p.m. But we're going to be showing a special screening of the first episode of the new season right here inside the dome. Here's a sneak peek of what the new season has in store. Representation matters. Kids see us and they say, I can do that. You want to be a veterinarian one day? Yes. That is awesome. You ready to be a critter fixer? What you think, bud? Yeah. Have you ever touched a cow? We get to do this as best friends. It's going to get any better than that. We're healing with feelings. <laughs> I'm Dr. Bernard Hodges. And I'm Dr. Terrence Ferguson. And, and we're, we're the Critter Fixers. Critter Fixers. New season Saturday, March 26th at 9 on Nat Geo Wild. You want to be in the house to watch the special screening of Critter Fixers Country Vets. Well, the number seven represents completion, it represents perfection, and it represents the number of years the baddest church has had the baddest pastor. You're invited to join us on March 27th at 10 a.m. as we celebrate the seventh pastoral anniversary of Pastor Tola Morgan. Our special guest for the occasion will be Dr. William Curtis, coming from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. 
If, if, you're, if you plan on being in attendance, make sure you register early for this special service. Well, family, that's it for this week. But for more information on these and other events, visit our website at fbbchome.org, follow us on social media, or text the keyword CONNECT to 478-249-5426 to have all information sent directly to your phone. Have a great week and enjoy today's worship experience. And now we're going to turn it back to Minister DeAndre and Brianna. All right, man, all you right. You did good, man. Lynn, like Peter Pan, you. you flew through that one, I swear. <laughs> <laughs> you did good on that one. That was Thank good. You. Oh, my that goodness. That was great. Oh, my goodness. Man. So did you, did you hear about the couple's game night? Oh, yeah. Oh, the yeah. family feud thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. You're, you're going, right? I, I I, I could. I need to find a. I need to find another person to go with. So we're gonna figure that oh, out. Oh, you're trying we're to figure, figure that, that out. out. You're gonna I'm figure. Oh, you're trying I'm to figure, figure that out. out. I'm gonna figure that out. You know right what? Now. I I'm can't a, wait to talk to Val I'm gonna and that Shekinah right after service. This is gonna be a really good moment of fellowship. Uh, it's gonna be real good. Man, I don't know, man. Like, look. I might need to pull you, Minister hold on, hold on, Watson hold on, hold on, as well. Are you available that day? Are you available that day? I'm definitely available that day. Okay. Okay. So okay. So if you're available and I'm available, we'll figure something out. Okay. You know what? We'll, we'll it's going to be some Lord have mercy wrapped up in some help me Jesus around here, boy. <laughs> it really is. It really is. Oh, you know man. what? I will see y'all at the service. Y'all know who y'all are. Y'all know who y'all are. Who's they? Y they know who they are. Who's they? You know who's what? They? It's okay. We got, we got people who need to start the service. Yeah. Pretty early, too. So put down your mic. Well, it's... Hold put, on, hold on. Don't, put don't it, grab it. Don't grab it. Don't grab the mic. Put, put don't it do down. That. Don't do put that. Put it down. No, no, no. See, this is precious. You keep... This is precious. Y'all know what's up. Y'all see the violence? Y'all know what's up. I'm going to just... See the violence? I'm going to just go this way. Hold on. Enjoy the worship experience. Wow. Let's get started. Hey, I Praise the Lord, everybody. Everyone stand up. Thank you for hearing us this. God, we thank you for Pastor Morgan. God, we ask to someone be to say in Jesus' name, amen. Good job. Y'all give Miss Ari a hand. Y'all give Miss Ari a hand. Listen, listen. Everybody excited to be alive today? Everybody excited to be alive? Good, y'all listen. We have three young men right here. I done made them a singing group, by the way. They are the Hillard Brothers. And they are gonna lead us in praise and worship this morning. So y'all give them all your amens. Clap your hands. Sing along with us. They're gonna lead us in praise and worship this morning, all right? All right.
Come on, if he's a great God, let's give him praise, everybody. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Everybody lift your hands. How great, let's say it, is our God. Sing with me, how great is our God. Oh, see how great. Everybody say it. Everybody say it. Everybody say it. How great. Come on, let me hear your church. Come on, let me hear your church. Yeah. How great is our God. Come on, these young people have already said the atmosphere. We're going to continue. How great. Everybody lift your hands. Let's worship Jesus. Sing with me, no, no. Hallelujah. Y'all sound good, church. Come on, say it one more time. Let's worship Jesus together. How great. There's no God like him. Sing with me. One last time, one last time. How great is our God. Set this atmosphere for God's Sing presence. Is our God. Oh, see how great. Oh, how great is our God. Come on, give him praise, church. Come on, exalt the greatness of God. Come on, exalt the greatness of God. Come on, let's lift up the greatness of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Bless his name. Glory to God. Hallelujah. What a mighty God we serve. And we bless the Lord on this wonderful Lord's Day. I'm so grateful and thankful just to be alive. Are you thankful just to be alive? You know, this could have gone another way. But God has seen fit by his grace and mercy to give us another day. It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed because his compassions fail not but morning by morning new mercies we see and we declare that great is his faithfulness unto us anybody in here know God has been good to you when you've been bad to him come on celebrate the goodness of God in your own life I said celebrate the goodness of God in your own life. I said celebrate the goodness of God in your own life. Your life, your life. Hallelujah. And we rose today to give him all the glory. Would y'all help me celebrate these young men who have blessed our hearts today. I bless you. the Hilliard brothers that's all right that's all right uh, our church is blessed with such gifted young people and uh, we give God praise for them thank God for our lit nation youth ministry hallelujah 
under the leadership of Minister Darius Duncan and his team. Amen. God bless you. And all of the uh, parents uh, that are participatory with our youth, blessings on you. Uh, youth Church is back in stride. So next Sunday, next Sunday, third and fourth Sundays, every Sunday at our church, uh, we have Lit Nation Youth Worship across the street uh, for all of our young people. So I want to encourage all of our parents, uh, have your young people here on next Sunday to be a part of Youth Church. Youth Church is back. Amen. Youth Church is back. Amen. Amen. And we are so grateful and thankful for continued progress. You may be seated in the Lord's church for a second. I want to thank the Lord for this day and for this opportunity we have to worship together in spirit and in truth. If those of you in the sanctuary, if there's anyone present today that this is your very first time uh, worshiping here at Fellowship, if you'll be willing, I'd like for you to stand. We want to just thank you and appreciate you for coming if this is your first time. Bless you, sir. Bless you, sir. Bless you, sister. Bless you, sister. God bless. Come on, church. There's a little bit of everywhere. Bless you, sister. God bless you. Fellowship. If these that have stood around you, just make them feel welcome. You don't have to shake their hand. Just speak to them. Make them feel welcome in our church. I want to let our first-time visitors know that we are humbled and thankful that you chose this church as your place of worship today. And uh, we pray that this experience uh, will be fulfilling enough for you to return after today and be our guest again. Amen. Those of you that are worshiping with us online, let me say good morning to our fellowship family online and uh, to all of our guests and visitors that are worshiping with us in Georgia, uh, in other states, around the country and outside of the country, even to our e-crew members across America. We praise God for you and we thank God that you are alive and well where you are. And even if you're not, God is still sustaining you and God is still keeping you. Those of you that are worshiping online, uh, whatever, uh, format you're on, whether it's YouTube, Facebook, Apple TV, our church's website, whatever uh, medium you've chosen, would you make yourself known if today is the first time of you worshiping here uh, virtually at Fellowship? We have people online to greet you technologically in the love of Jesus Christ. Amen. And we thank you for choosing this church uh, as your place of worship today. Amen. I'm so glad to see that y'all got to church today. <laughs> I can't stand this time of the year. Just leave time alone. Just leave it alone. Just leave it alone. But it is what it is. So I'm grateful uh, that uh, the Lord has blessed you to be here this week. Uh, we've got an exciting week here at our church. We're going to be uh, in Bible study this coming Wednesday. I want to thank Reverend Willie Rains for standing in my stead this past Wednesday. Thank you, man. Um, uh, we're going to be studying. We're studying fasting. We're studying fasting. So I want to invite all of you. Our Wednesdays in the Word are in person and online. So I want to invite you to be here with us on this coming Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time uh, to study the word of the Lord with us. And then this weekend, we've got a couple of great things going on. Um, this weekend, church, will be the weekend that our uh, teams are going to go to Family Promise, as we told you on last Sunday, and they're going to minister uh, in that area for some specific needs uh, for family promise. This is the continuation of our uh, mission for this, this year, affecting community through service. And those of you who don't know, uh, Family Promise is an agency, local agency here uh, in the middle Georgia area that uh, supports families in transition. Uh, families that may be homeless or families that may be uh, in some type of detriment 
um, on their way to a bigger and better life. All right. So our church is going to step in this coming weekend and uh, they've got a new facility. We're going to supply some needs for those families at their new facility and uh, make some investments uh, into, amen, amen, and make some investments. And so I want you to know uh, that's our uh, acts for this month, and we want to be prayerful. Uh, those that are going to represent our church uh, this weekend, we want to be prayerful for them. And uh, next Sunday, you'll get some footage of, of what our church did to help those families uh, in their transition. Let's give God praise for that. Let's give God praise for that. And then also, all married couples, all married husbands and wives, want to see you Saturday evening uh, from 5 to 7 uh, here in the Dome. We're going to have a little fun <clears throat> with our marriage ministry here at our church. And uh, we want to see you here this coming Saturday for our couples feud uh, game night. <clears throat> now, if y'all already fussing, you can still come and uh, maybe the fun uh, ease, <laughs> ease the tension. Uh, but we're going to have some fun. We're going to minister to our uh, husbands and wives uh, here in our church for the glory of God. And uh, we want to see you here um, this coming Saturday. Uh, now, y'all know uh, Gladine Spies is hosting this. So... James, you're going to be here with her too, right? That's reason enough for all y'all to show up. Just, just take my word for it. <laughs> just take my word for it. Lady in this hosted it. Listen, you want to be here for that. <laughs> We're going to have a good time. <laughs> We're going to have a good time. We're looking forward uh, to Saturday night with our uh, married couples. Amen, 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 amen. Let's stand for the word of the Lord. I want to summon your senses and invite your intellect to the book of Galatians, chapter number five. Galatians chapter number five. And it is there that the Holy Spirit has highlighted for us one verse, it is verse number one. Galatians 5 and 1 says, Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ has made us free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. I want to tag this text, Stand. You may be seated in the Lord's church. There is a reality that all of us must continually face and respond to in this world. And that is, we are defined by what we stand for. Who you are is identifiable to others by the things that you stand for. If you consider that everything you stand for has a label to it. And whatever you identify yourself with, whatever you potentially support, whatever you claim to have an affinity to has the potential to become synonymous with who you are. 
And if you understand that reality, then you also understand that you cannot live this life in neutral as much as you would like to. As much as you would like to shy away or back away from making some type of persuasive conclusion, part of life in this life is all about what stands you take. As a matter of fact, if you take no stand, you've taken a stand. If you take no stand, you risk somebody assigning a stand to you. And I think that my life and your life is too valuable for it to be defined on someone else's terms. I don't want people to give me a stand, I'll take a stand. So that they will be clear where I stand. And that's part of this life. It's actually a part of the freedom that we experience as citizens in this world. So now it begs the question, Pastor, then what really is freedom? What is that? Uh, the African American community has been fighting for that for 400 plus years. Other minorities have been fighting for certain freedoms over many times of years. What does that mean? Well, for some, freedom may mean the right to choose among options. For others, freedom may mean the absence of social, economic, and political oppression. For somebody else, freedom may mean the removal of control from emotional hazards or historical wounds. I don't want my life to be governed by my bad history. For somebody else, freedom may mean the ability to control one's own existence. All of those meanings fall somewhere under existential freedom, under sociopolitical freedom, under emotional freedom. But what does that mean within a Christian context? Ladies and gentlemen, freedom for the Christian means that you sacrifice self-mastery and allow self-mastery to give way to the submission of the self to God. That when I walk in freedom, my freedom is in God and not from God. When I walk in freedom as a child of God, I find the fulfillment of freedom. Let me see if I can help you. When I give myself wholly over to God, that's where I find existential freedom because in him I live move and have my being when I give myself wholly over to God in him I find social economic freedom because the Lord is my shepherd I shall not want he makes me to lie down in green 
pastures and God shall supply not some of my needs all of my needs according to his riches in Christ Jesus when I give myself wholly over to the Lord I find emotional freedom because if any man be in Christ he's a new creature <laughs> The old triggers and the old emotional wounds are passed away. And all things, I wish I had some folk in here, you're not too sleepy to testify, that your life reaches its fulfillment not trying to get away from God, but trying to get to God. Old things are passed away. All things become new. So in my search for existential freedom and emotional freedom and socioeconomic freedom, I find it all in God. That, ladies and gentlemen, is the recurring theme of this letter that Paul wrote to the church at Galatia that there at that church there was some element, some opposing force that was robbing the people of freedom. Let me take your hand and walk you back in time to this church at Galatia that Paul planted and there historically he wrote this letter. It was actually a letter of rebuke because the church at Galatia had allowed intruders and troublemakers to infiltrate their church and intrude their church with another gospel. They had allowed these people to come into their church and teach them that Jesus plus circumcision is the way to go. Their other gospel was Christ plus circumcision. These people were teaching the saints that in addition to getting saved, these Gentile Christians, they needed to be circumcised so that they can be viewed as respectable Jews. And the problem with that is the people were acquiescing to this new gospel for three reasons. Number one, it gave them professional advantage. Number two, it made them look less heathen. And number three, they got access into Jewish synagogues. It sounds like it wasn't Jesus only, it was Jesus and putting some type of addendum on Christ and the minute you add anything to the work of Jesus Christ you have just nullified the work of Jesus Christ Christ doesn't need any additional salvistic significance Christ doesn't need anything to, for you to be saved you don't need Christ let me go ahead on and get in theological trouble it's not Christ and baptism. It's not Christ and tongues. It's not Christ and communion. It's not Christ and new membership orientation. It's not Christ and a black suit. It's not Christ and a uniform. It's, it's, it's not Christ and tithes. We don't do all of that to, to solidify our Christianity. We do all that because we're saved, not to complete our Christianity. Our Christianity was complete one Friday on Galgotha's Hill when our Lord Jesus Christ hung for six hours with one spike in his right wrist, another spike in his left wrist, another spike in the spikes of his ankles and hung there for six hours until he got tired of hanging. What can wash away my sins? 
not tongues, not communion, not baptism, not tithes, nothing. I'm going to feel like preaching in a minute. But the blood of Jesus Christ. And you don't need to add anything to that. You and I believe, ladies and gentlemen, theologically, in the sufficient work of Jesus Christ on the cross. And there's nothing needed to be added to solidify our salvation. And the minute you add anything to it, you've canceled all of it. The minute you add anything to it, you're telling Jesus that six hours dying a Roman capital punishment wasn't enough. I don't know about you, but I don't need him to do nothing else to prove his love for me. These persons that had infiltrated the church at Galatia was teaching a Christ plus circumcision gospel. And Paul rose up and said, no, that's not what I preach to you. I preach to you Christ and him crucified to be sufficient to appease the wrath of God and to restore you back into right relationship with God the Father. He says, now I need you to take a stand. Stand, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ has made you free. Don't, don't allow people to come into your life to introduce to you another gospel. And here is the tension, y'all. Here is the tension. The tension of this text was that the threat to the, solidif the solidification of their salvation was not outside the church. The very church that they attended was a threat to their own salvation. Paul says that the problem is that those who claim to know Jesus are now working against Jesus. It's enough that we got so many issues fighting against the world, but when the church starts to pollute and pervert the gospel, now we got problems inside the church because now we become our own enemy. He says, I need you to take a stand, watch this, not against the world, but against the erroneous theology that is being purported in the church. I knew y'all wasn't going to say nothing. Because ladies and gentlemen, everything that sounds good isn't God. And everything that, that, that is purported in the Lord's church must be weighed against doctrine and theology. Might I suggest to you, ladies and gentlemen, that this season that we were in, in these last two years, God has lifted the curtain off of the church and exposed the foolishness that has been going on in the Lord's church. And ladies and gentlemen, it is a time of evaluation that we have to look look and see is that the gospel or is that entertainment is that the gospel or is that some kind of show to get because you know people pay to go to shows I can't get no help here ladies and gentlemen this has been a season for us to evaluate the true word of God against the show Because in this season, we've had to be removed from lights, camera, and action. And we just had to stand there in front of a camera 
with the Lord's word. I can't get no help here. The grass withers and the flowers fade, but the word of the Lord, I can't get no help here, shall stand forever. Paul looks at the church and said, what is this foolishness that you are entertaining? He literally says at the opening of chapter 3, O Galatians, who has bewitched you? And he called them foolish. Lord, I wish I had some Bible for God. Foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you with this mess that you need to go back into the works of the flesh? He says, you need to stand fast. Come here, come here, come here. That word stand, y'all, has its Greek etymology in this Greek word, stako. Let the church say stako. I just made you Greek theologians right then and there. Can I tell you what it means? It doesn't mean to stand up. It means to hold one's ground. <laughs> and maintain your position. It's a military directive, DeAndre, that, off, that automatically presupposes that Christian stands is a battle. See, this is, this is no playground. This is a battleground. I can't get no help here. And when you take a stand for Jesus, you have just taken a position in the battle. Hold your ground. And y'all ain't feeling me, so let me talk to the military people who understand you are out of order if you move until you get the next directive. When you in a real military position, you hold your ground and you stay there until your commander gives you the next directive. And if they have not spoken yet, you stay right there. It means hold your ground. <laughs> uh, now here's the, here's, the, here's the issue with holding your ground. He says stand, but stand fast. Word there means to be firm. Be strong. Watch this, y'all. To hold your ground firm means to gather all of your faculties and make sure you never relax. Because some of the battle that is engaged is a sneak attack. It doesn't come with an announcement. It doesn't come with a news on social media. It doesn't come through CNN. The enemy often attacks you from the back, from the side, and you got to keep your nerves up. You got to keep your faculties strong because if you don't keep your faculties strong, you can be thrown off your position when you're not aware. So it literally means don't relax. Because relax leads to relapse. Preach, Tolan Morgan. Might I tell you, when you relax, that's the time you are most vulnerable to relapsing. Hold your ground. Stay alert. Don't relax. Keep your shoulders up. Keep looking around you. Keep your eyes open. Keep your ears attentive. Be looking for the next directive. Watch and pray. Don't sleep on the job. Don't relax when you get saved. See, ladies and gentlemen, just after you get saved is the time that you're most vulnerable. 
I said just after you get saved is the time you're most vulnerable because the enemy will come in and make you think that your decision was a bad decision because when you got saved your decision doesn't have any Christian experience with it yet so you're most vulnerable just after you give your life to Christ so that's the time when you get saved that's when you need to submit to some Christian discipline come to Christian enrichment be in Bible study because you can get saved one day and the enemy can come and dissuade you from it because you don't know how to hold your ground tell somebody I'm going to hold my ground the enemy has come to try to sway me and throw me off my kilter but I'm going to hold my hold my ground stand fast uh, stand fast y'all is the term throughout the Bible that God used as the posture of resolution <laughs> I said it's the posture of resolution Exodus chapter 14 the children of Israel have just gotten out of Egyptian slavery started their trek to the promised land and the pillar has led them to this body of water called the Red Sea they're in this geographical cul-de-sac in which the children of, of Egypt are behind them and the Red Sea is in front of them and God speaks to Moses and tells Moses look man tell your church members stand still and see the salvation of the Lord for the enemy you see today you will never see them again second chronicles chapter 20 verse 17 the children of Israel have now been attacked by this triad and Judah and Israel don't know what to do God called them to a nocturnal church prayer meeting that night and God spoke to one of the men in the meeting and said listen tell them that this battle is not theirs they ain't got to fight this all they got to do is set themselves stand still and see the salvation of the Lord ladies and gentlemen when you take your Stand. it's your position that I'm fully persuaded that neither death nor life nor powers nor principalities are going to persuade me to leave the joy of the Lord I'm resolved stand still and see the salvation of the Lord tell somebody stand still I I, I, I know the world keeps introducing to you other options but stand still I know the enemy keeps throwing stuff at your face by surprise but stand still you think you got over one problem here come another problem but God's word to you is stand still and hold your ground watch this church here's the whole point of this Here's the whole point of this, y'all. There is Duncan. You can't stand until you understand. See, the reason why you're struggling to stand is because you don't understand. So let me help you with your stand so you can better understand. What is the stand? Here is the stand, Brother Deacons. I am restored and reconciled to God the Father through the death and resurrection of his son, the Lord Jesus Christ. I believe that the Bible is the first and final authority on my understanding of the character of God, his kingdom, and Christian living. And I've been filled with the Holy Ghost to live holy and to be a witness for God in the earth. That's my stand. And that ought to be your stand. My salvation is in Jesus. The word of God is my governing body for living. And the Holy Ghost lives inside of me to live for the glory of God. Now you can stand because you understand. Tell somebody, stand now. Tell, 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 you, you, listen, listen, listen. Everybody, um, let me help somebody. Let me help somebody. 
You are not taking a stand if you agree with everybody else's stand. No, you flaky, you double-minded in all of your ways. You just trying to get approval because you want everybody to like you. But the truth of the matter is when you stand for Jesus, some people going to be mad at you. Some people not going to like you. You can't agree with everybody when you stand for Jesus. I don't know how you feel about it. But I'm going to sleep at night knowing you mad at me. I don't give a... For God I'll live. And for God I'll die. And Jesus is Lord. You stand for nothing if you stand for everything. If you run in your house right, you ought to have some standards. Your children ought to know is certain stuff that ain't going on. I don't care what they doing in the world. I don't care what's the latest culture. I don't care what's the latest move. Is some stuff ain't happening. Stand fast. He doesn't just tell him to stand fast, y'all. I'm still in verse one. You thought I got off verse. I'm in verse one. He didn't just say stand fast. Fred, he said stand free. <laughs> stand fast in the liberty. I thought I had some Bible folk around here. Stand fast in the liberty wherewith Christ has made you free. C c come here, church. Uh, Christ. The, the way this text really translates in its original text, it really translates, Kara, for freedom, Christ has made us free. <laughs> I, 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 I'll try it again, Reigns. For freedom, Christ has made us free. So that has two, applica two applications, Lenine. The first application is Christ has freed us with freedom the second one is Christ has freed us for freedom <laughs> come here <laughs> I'm going to shout off one verse in a minute Christ has freed us with freedom means that Christ freed us freely that nobody compelled, coerced, or convinced Jesus to set us free. He did it freely. John chapter 10, verse 11, Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. <laughs> and the good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. John chapter 10, verse 18, he said, no man takes my life. I lay it down of myself. It means, y'all, that Jesus Christ, watch me, let me go ahead on and get in trouble. The cross was not an obligation for Jesus. The cross was an option. Nobody forced him to get on that cross. He chose the nails. He chose the cross. And he did it out of love. Y'all ain't feeling me. Greater love has no man than this. Than a man lay down his life for his friends. He did it out of love and not out of obligation. 
because the purest form of love is choice. I don't want nobody doing anything for me that they really don't want to do. If you forced to do it, don't do it. If you feel obligated to do it, don't do it. But real love is by choice. If I got to force you to treat me right, you don't love me. If I got to force you to honor me, you don't love me. But real love is by choice. As a matter of fact, when you love somebody, you sitting up trying to figure out ways to express yourself to that person by choice and not by consequence. You better watch folk who do stuff for you that don't want to do it. Because it might be some poison in that gift. If you don't, you don't want to do it, I don't want you to do it. You don't want to do it, I don't want you to do it either. Mm -mm, mm -mm. You don't want to do it? Mm -mm. Hey, <laughs> you doing me a favor, go on. Because real love is a choice. I can't get no help here. I said real love is a choice. Okay, y'all still acting funny on me. Um, I really don't like you acting funny on me, so let me talk to the real people. That's the real key to a healthy relationship. A healthy relationship is love by choice. See, there's really nothing you can do to make me love you because I chose you. I can't get no help. And because I chose you, I chose to love you by my own choice. Can I tell you, ladies and gentlemen, he did it freely with freedom, but he did it for freedom. You thought I forgot, I didn't forget, come in. For freedom, Christ has made us free. He made us free because he always designed us for freedom. And anything that works against that freedom, he gonna work against it. Lord have mercy today y'all ain't feeling me so let me help you in our original schematic Ruth Jackson we were made in his image and in his likeness and if we're made in his image and in his likeness we were not ever designed for bondage You weren't designed to be in the bondage of an abusive relationship. You weren't designed to be in the bondage of socioeconomic oppression. You were not designed to be in the bondage of economic burden and poverty. You were not designed for any type of bondage because the God from which we were made was not a God of bondage. He designed us for freedom and we blew the freedom We blew the freedom trying to chase freedom. Okay, here come the breakdown. Y'all ain't feeling me. Here it go. We up in the garden chilling. We got everything we ever wanted. We are in the image of God. And here comes a snake to convince us that what we have isn't enough. So we go chase after a fruit that was forbidden because he's convinced us that our restrictions are not fulfilling our lives. So the text says the one of the reasons why she bit of the fruit and he did because it was pleasant to the eye. It looked good. Y'all acting funny for real? That's what we're doing today? It, it, it looked good. So the enemy tried to convince us that God was keeping something from us 
So we're going to go fulfill our flesh. And the freedom of the flesh led to the forfeiture of freedom. I got rewind in my mind. You go chase something in the name of freedom. Now you done lost your relationship with God. You done lost the crib because they done got evicted out of the Garden of Eden. And now you're looking at yourself shamefully because you got to go hide yourself in fig leaves. When I tell you I'm preaching so good today. Okay, y'all still ain't feeling me. Luke chapter 15, it was a boy there who told his daddy, hey man, give me the goods that belongs to me. He wants his freedom. And in the process of getting his own freedom, he loses his freedom. He end up in a life of decline, end up in a pig sty, and end up with mud between his toes because what he had, he lost trying to chase what he had. Ladies and gentlemen, the, the freedom of the flesh will lead to the forfeiture of your own freedom. Because ladies and gentlemen, you got your freedom in God, not in you. When you live life on God's terms, you got freedom. When you live life on your terms, you lose your freedom. Okay, David, these people ain't hearing me. Uh, I told them the Lord was my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures, restores my soul, leads me beside still waters. But I saw a valley I wanted to go in. And the Lord didn't tell me to go there. Life was cool till I got to that valley. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil. I was close to death, but God had to reach down and snatch me out. Life would have been cool had I just did it God's way. Your pursuit of freedom may cause you to lose freedom. And Jesus never designed for you to live a life of bondage. It was never his intention for that to be your burden. His intention for you to live in freedom in him so that you can live a fulfilled life. He said, now I'm, I'm fighting for this. Christ has made us free because he wants to restore the freedom that you forfeited. And now if you're really going to stand free and stand fast, you got to stand forward. I'm done. I'm done. Here it is. Y'all ready? He says, if you stand fast and stand free and let God give you the freedom that you really need. He said, it's some relationships you can't get yoked up with again. Darius, maybe, uh, maybe you don't know what a yoke is. Uh, uh, all my people who've been on the farm know what a yoke is. A yoke, ladies and gentlemen, is this cross beam that is fitted around the necks of two animals and is hooked up to a plow or cart that these two animals are supposed to pull. It's a yoke, it's a pairing, and it, and it got them caught by the neck. And because it got them caught by the neck, their whole life is directed in the hands of somebody who's controlling their head. I can't get no help here. He says, you are gonna get entangled again if you in the wrong pairing if you link up with these Judaizers who have infiltrated the church and trying to teach you Christ plus circumcision you're going to be put back in what Christ died to pull you out of the key word ain't entangled the key word is again and be not entangled again 
in the yoke of bondage. Listen, I don't know how you feel about it, but Jesus died and brought you through too much for you to go back into something that he has pulled you out of that you couldn't get yourself out of. And the reason why you was in it in the first place is because you didn't discern it to be an entanglement. Preach told it, Morgan. Paul told him, hey man, it was an entanglement, but, the, but I had to call it what it was because you was in it and you didn't know what it was because you saw it as enticement and not entanglement. See, ladies and gentlemen, some of y'all got to get out of this thing that you scared to move forward because you're familiar with the past. And sometimes that which is familiar is actually an entanglement. Can you text somebody and tell them Tolan Morgan is preaching the Lord's word in this church today? You so in, you so familiar with it, you don't realize it's an entanglement. And ladies and gentlemen, God's word to you, you got to be willing to go forward even if you don't know what that is than to risk the familiar and know you being entangled. Because God would rather for you to be free than for you to compromise the familiar. To get entangled again and listen if you don't go with freedom it's only going to take you backwards you can only go backwards and I got too much life to go backwards so if you stand fast and stand free you can stand forward and walk in the freedom that God has given you. Everyone standing. Somebody in here, you, um, you've let people define how you get approved based upon whether you agree with them or not and God sent me in here to set you free from the bondage of approval you can still be who you are without trying to make everybody like you. Life is going to come your way one day and force you to take a stand. The rubber is going to meet the road and you're going to have to make and take a stand and what I've discovered more often than not is that when you stand for Jesus it's more often than not not a popular stand it's not the culture's stand <laughs> see in the modern day culture people want Jesus they don't want church in the modern day culture, people want church. They don't want, they want spirituality without Christianity. I don't want to be a Christian, just let me be spiritual. But you know, the devil is spiritual. The devil is spiritual, y'all. I don't want Christianity because I want to live my life my way on my terms and Christianity has some restrictions 
Here's what I've come to find out. <laughs> that some of the restrictions that my mom and daddy put on me helped me to live. There are some restrictions that are not designed to kill you. They're designed to keep you alive. That's what we found out in the garden. God was actually trying to keep humanity from death. You can have whatever you want. Just don't touch this. You touch this, you eat of this tree, you're going to die. There are some restrictions that are designed for your life. They're not designed against your will. They're designed that you would be alive to even have a will. When you look back over your life, you ought to thank God that there was somebody in your life that kept you from some stuff. And if they didn't keep you from it, you better thank God he preserved you through it. <laughs> But at some point in your life, you got to take a stand. At some point in your life, you got to be clear and resolved and conclusive about what you believe about Jesus Christ. And the contingency upon taking a stand is that you understand. I want to talk to somebody in this place that both is in the sanctuary and online and says, Pastor, I'm ready to take a stand for Jesus now. What must I do to be saved? I want to live in the freedom. I want to live in the freedom. I don't want to be bound by my past. I don't want to be bound by my history. I don't want to be bound by religious foolishness. I don't want to be bound by oppression. I don't want to be bound by my emotional hurts. I want to live in the freedom of Jesus Christ. What must I do? Number one, you've got to be willing to submit to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. Remember I told you that Christian freedom means to allow self-mastery to give way to the submission of the self to God. Submit yourself unto the Lord. Let him rule, regulate, and run your life. Honor his lordship over your life. Number two, you've got to believe by faith that he died for you and died as you. And his blood was shed for the remission of your sins. Number three, you've got to be willing to believe by faith that after Christ was dead for three days, God raised him from the dead, not as a weakling, but with all power in his hands. You believe those three things in your heart? He'll fill you with the Holy Ghost so you can live for him from the inside out. If that is you in this place and online, I want you to grab your smartphone and you want to give your life to the Lord Jesus Christ, grab your smartphone now and text us or email us. Those of you that are at home near computer, if the Spirit of the Lord is dealing with your heart, go to your computer now and email us. Our staff stands ready to receive your confession of faith. I would be honored to serve as your pastor. I would love for this church to be the place that you call home and let Jesus be your Lord. You can text us at 478-227-0057 or you can email us at membership at fpbchome.org. This is the day for you. This is the Christ for you. This is the church for you. We want you to be a part of the love of the fellowship of the believers for the glory of God. Yeah, take me back.
Come on, clap your hands to Jesus and give him glory. Hallelujah. You may be seated in the Lord's church. Thank God for his word. Thank God for his word. Church, it's giving time. It's giving time. It's giving time. On screen, you have these five options of giving. Let's now share our tithes and offerings unto the Lord. You know through our worship, we understand that giving is worship. We give our praise. We give our hearts. We give our bodies. We give our minds. We give our worship. We give our attention. And we also give of our finances to the Lord for his glory and um, let's do this now in the spirit of joy for the Bible says that the Lord loves a cheerful giver did y'all hear me the Lord loves a cheerful giver and uh, tithing is the first tenth of our income to God as is shared with us in Malachi chapter 3 verses 7 through 12 he instructs us to bring the tithe into his house that there may be provision in his house he says when we do that he'll open windows of heaven pour us out a blessing we won't have room to receive it he will rebuke the devourer for our sake and all nations will call us blessed I believe God to heal my body and keep my mind I believe God to sustain my heart, protect my family. I also believe him to meet every financial need in my life. Not one of them, every single one of them. And when I do it God's way, God's word is held up in my life. Is there anybody else in here that can testify that God's word has been manifested in your life when you have done it God's way. Those of you that are online, I would that you would share with us in our giving now as we're giving in the sanctuary. Let's look to the Lord in prayer. Holy Father, we thank you for blessing our hearts, for making a way out of no way. Thank you, God, for meeting every provision in our lives. And we take that which you've given us and give unto you as you have instructed. Thank you for the blessings that are attached to our obedience. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's give unto the Lord now. Those of you with envelopes as you came in today, you can uh, deposit those envelopes into the receptacles as you leave out of worship today. I'm going to be giving through our Shelby Next app. If that's not your choice, great. You have four other options there. Text to give. You can do it via computer. Any way that is convenient and comfortable for you, we'll do it for the glory of God. I'm just thankful that I got something to give. I'm thankful that I got something to give. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. May the blessings of the Lord be on you as you have been obedient in your giving both in the sanctuary and online. And may God's grace be your portion forever in Jesus' name. We're so thankful and grateful again for this Yes Sunday, our Youth Emphasis Sunday. Thanks, Thank God again uh, for our young people leading us in worship. And... Um, I want to I want to again appreciate all the parents who collaborate and cooperate with our Lit Nation Youth Ministry uh, for the glory of God. I would that everyone, uh, if you'll stay seated, uh, one of the members of our Lit Nation Youth Ministry is going to come, going to give us the benediction after she comes and prays. If you'll stay seated, the deacons and ushers will come and uh, give you an orderly dismissal so that we can make sure. Uh, that you are physically and or socially distanced until you get out of the building and uh, we want to do it for the glory of God. I pray that you are blessed. I look to see y'all this Wednesday at 6.30 right back here in the sanctuary 
and we're going to have an exciting weekend uh, this coming weekend in service and um, uh, with our married couples those of you uh, that uh, are intending to attend next week's worship registration begins tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. Uh, on our uh, church's website those of you that are online I want to invite you to be a part of our worship experience on next Sunday for the glory of God. And I want to thank the Lord. Two weeks from today, we get to celebrate seven years together as pastor and people. Two weeks from today, I am grateful and thankful to the Lord. Seven years, we just got here yesterday. It's been seven years already. And God has been good. So many great things that we have to celebrate together uh, for the glory of God. So that's our month for the month of March. And we pray that God's blessings will be on all of you. God, we thank you for the service. God, we thank you for getting our home safe. God, we thank you for everything. In Jesus' name, amen. Good job.